Ena mana, ena reo, ena iwi o na hoe fa. Tene aku mihi mahana kia koto. Kia ora tato kato. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I extend a warm greeting to you all. I specifically acknowledge the Honourable Christopher Finlayson, Minister of the Crown, Ms Rachel Haywood, Deputy <coughs> Secretary to the Executive Council, Tena Kōrua. It is a great pleasure for David and me to welcome you all here to Government House for this investiture ceremony. What makes today particularly special is that it's an opportunity to acknowledge the significant contribution of a number of individuals. Today's recipients have enriched our communities and our country as a whole by their actions. Today we thank them and we celebrate the work they have done for us. As Governor General, I have the authority and the privilege, on behalf of Her Majesty, the Queen of New Zealand, to hold an investiture for her and to confer the honours to which each recipient is entitled. Ladies and gentlemen, as each one is honoured, may I invite you to join me in thanking them and congratulating them for their service to the country. Mr Hewitt Humphrey will now summon the recipients and read a citation for each person. Your Excellency, to receive the insignia of a Companion of the New Zealand Order of Merit, Professor Po Tebara of Hamilton for services to Māori and education. Professor Po Temara of Hamilton is Professor of Te Reo Māori and Tikanga Māori at Waikato University and is a recognised exponent of Fai Korero, oratory, and Maurako, Māori weapons handling. He's a director of Te Pane Kiritanga or Te Reo Māori programme, the Institute of Excellence in the Māori language. He was one of the key founders of the programme and has contributed to Te Wananga or Aotearoa's Māori language strategy to improve the quality of Te Reo Māori throughout the country. Graduates of the programme are regarded as amongst the elite in the usage of Māori language. Professor Te Mara was previously a kaumatua and lecturer at Victoria University. Professor Te Mara was the primary spokesperson for the Māori King when Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall visited Turanga Waiwai in 2015. Please come forward. Your Excellency, to receive the insignia of a Companion of the Queen's Service Order, Judge Sharon McOslin of Papakura for services to the judiciary. Judge Sharon McOslin was appointed to the Auckland District Court before transferring to the North Shore District Court and finally to the Manukau District Court in 2000, where she remained until her retirement in 2015. She served as the Criminal Liaison Judge for Papakura and Pukikohe District Courts and was a member of the District Court Jury Judges Committee. She is presented at New Zealand Law Society seminars and was involved as a team leader assisting with the Law Society's Litigation Skills Programme. Judge McOslin worked for the Crown Solicitor's Office in Auckland in the early 1990s as a senior Crown Prosecutor. Your Excellency, to receive the insignia of an Officer of the New Zealand Order of Merit, 
Mr. Morris Clark of Wellington for services to heritage preservation and the construction industry. Mr. Morris Clark is the proprietor and managing director of McKee Fell Constructors. He's a veteran engineer, developer and builder who's been responsible for the restoration of several iconic heritage buildings in Wellington, including the Public Trust Building, former Government Life Building and the former Defence Building on Stout Street. Other strengthening and refurbishment projects have included the Victoria University Hunter Building, the Law School, Old Government Building, the Beehive, Victoria University Rankin Brown Building, and the Museum of Wellington City and Sea. He's a board member of the Wellington Civic Trust and is an advisor to the Wellington Citizenship Trust. He and his wife are core supporters for the Holocaust Centre and supporters of the New Zealand Festival of the Arts. Mr Clark is a significant supporter of the Downtown Community Ministry. Dr. Patrick Kelly of Auckland for services to children's health. Dr. Patrick Kelly is a child protection paediatrician at Te Puaruaho, the child protection unit of Starship Hospital. He drove the establishment of New Zealand's first multi-agency child protection service, Pua Waitahi, which has since become the exemplar service of its kind in Australasia and is a hub for specialist training. Dr. Kelly runs major training programs for physical and sexual abuse and has conducted several world-leading studies into child abuse, including influential papers on inflicted head injury and sexually transmitted infections in children. He's in strong demand as an expert witness on child protection. He's been influential in developing policy and practice for CIF, police and the health sector. Dr. Kelly chaired the Paediatric Society of New Zealand Child Protection Special Interest Group from 2000 to 2012. Dr. Peter Martin of Wellington for services to tobacco control. Dr. Peter Martin was a respiratory physician. In the 1960s, he noted high rates of lung cancer and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease in patients who smoked. He conducted research in support of tobacco control and the establishment of smoke-free environments and initiated nicotine replacement therapy, NRT. Currently, $7 million is invested in NRT annually as part of New Zealand's tobacco control program. He established a pioneering stop smoking clinic at Wellington Hospital in 1985, providing group-based behavioural support and optional NRT and achieved high quitting rates. He became Quitline's medical advisor in 2001 and remained in this part-time role until 2014. Dr. Martin made a positive contribution to the development of Quitline's leading evidence-based service by advising on behavioural support, the use of NRT and other pharmacotherapies and staff training. Your Excellency, to receive the insignia of a member of the New Zealand Order of Merit, Dr. Morris Alley of Palmerston North, for services to conservation and education. Dr. Morris Alley and his wife established the Julie Alley Bursary for postgraduate research in New Zealand conservation. His investigations and research has helped in the recovery of Kiwi, Kākāpō, Kea, Hoiho, Kaka and Tuatara. 
He's a forensic expert for the Department of Conservation and worked for 47 years at Massey University. He established links with universities in China and Mongolia. Dr. Ali is a member of the New Zealand Society of Veterinary Pathology and has authored over 150 scientific publications and contributed more than 100 articles to the Wildlife Society of New Zealand Veterinary Association newsletter. Dr. Monique Faliafar of Auckland for services to the Pacific community and health. Dr. Monique Faliafar was the founding chief executive of LEVAR, which specialises in Pacific suicide prevention, mental health, disability support services, public health, cultural competency and holistic well-being. She has governance roles with the Health Promotion Agency, MB Science Challenge Board, and the Westpac External Stakeholder Panel, and as Deputy Chair of the New Zealand Psychologists Board. Internationally, she serves on the Pacific Advisory Group, is a mental health advisor to Australia's National Rugby League, is an alumni of the Commonwealth Emerging Pacific Leaders Dialogue, and one of only two Pacific Associate Members of Global Women. Dr. Fali Afar achieved distinction in her Doctorate of Clinical Psychology from the University of Auckland. Mr. Stuart Heal of Cromwell for services to cricket and the community. Mr. Stuart Heal is a director and chairman of New Zealand Cricket and oversaw the successful co-hosting of the 2015 Cricket World Cup. He chaired Otago Cricket for six years. He's had significant roles with Rotary in New Zealand and was a director of Rotary International, a role which comes to New Zealand only once every 10 to 12 years. He's chairman of Pioneer Energy Limited, a director of Pulse Energy Limited, a director of Southern Rural Fire Authority, a director of IFS Forestry Group Limited, chairman of Well South Primary Health Network, and chairman of University Bookshop Otago Limited. Mr. Heal has been a trustee of Otago Hospice. Mr. Barry Holland of Auckland for services to broadcasting. Mr. Holland began his career at 1ZB, hosted the television shows Break 21, co-fronted Top Town and hosted the Superstar series and the On The Mat wrestling series. He provided live broadcasts and commentaries for the 1988 Seoul Olympic Games and four Commonwealth Games. He hosted a top rating sports program on News Talk ZB which included the popular Buy, Sell and Exchanges segment. He's been a sports producer and tutored broadcasting cadets and journalists. He was president of Polio New Zealand and has been a voluntary member of the New Zealand Cripple Children's Society. Mr Holland was a steward and director of the Auckland Racing Club for eight years.
Mr Andy Lowe of Havelock North for services to conservation. Mr Andy Lowe inspired landowners, iwi, government departments, local bodies and volunteers to set up the Cape Sanctuary Wildlife Restoration Project on the Cape Kidnappers Peninsula. It covers over 2,500 hectares and contains the most diverse range of endangered wildlife species on mainland coastal New Zealand, proving that endangered species, human habitation, food production and recreation can coexist. Mr Lowe's advocacy is highly regarded by the Department of Conservation and Hawke's Bay Regional Council. He strives for a pest-free New Zealand and holds governance roles in other similar projects throughout New Zealand. Mr Lowe sponsors the local rescue helicopter, Hawke's Bay Rugby, and numerous other causes. Ms Sarah Peichel of Auckland for services to business. Ms Sarah Peichel founded Sarah Peichel Limited, a public relations and communications company. Ms Peichel supports health and not-for-profit organisations. She was a director and founding partner of award-winning Lush Cosmetics Australasia. She serves on the boards of a number of New Zealand companies, including Rose and Thorn Lingerie, My Droplet Charitable Trust and Co of Women, which supports New Zealand female entrepreneurs. Ms Peichel is a trustee of the Mental Health Foundation of New Zealand and has worked with a number of New Zealand organisations, including the Breast Cancer Research Trust, the Starship Foundation, Kids Can, Kids First Hospital and Sweet Louise Charitable Trust for Breast Cancer Patient Support. Mrs Leah Tuffield of Whanganui for services to special education. Mrs Leah Tuffield was a principal for 15 years and then worked at Arahonga Special School where she developed and implemented an outreach service which gave specialist training to regular classroom teachers. The impact has been widespread with 20 teachers now working across 40 schools. The outreach service is considered a model to inform integrated special education services in other regions. Mrs Tuffield has also contributed her significant experience and expertise in her role as a limited statutory manager, helping a number of schools with change management processes, and contributed her expertise at the national level in her role as a senior advisor at the Ministry of Education. Mrs Margaret Wolfe of Auckland for services to gymnastics. Mrs Margaret Wolfe has had a passion for rhythmic gymnastics for almost 60 years as a competitor, teacher, mentor, coach, judge, promoter and event organiser both in New Zealand and internationally. Mrs Wolfe has served almost continuously on the National Rhythmic Gymnastic Sport Development Committee since 1985 and held the position of an international brevet judge, the highest international judging qualification for more than 12 years. As an international brevet judge, she's represented New Zealand at many international events, including Commonwealth Games, Youth Olympics, and World Championships. Mrs. Wolfe was awarded a life membership by Jim Sports New Zealand in 2012.
to receive the insignia of an honorary member of the New Zealand Order of Merit, Mrs. Alice Lynch and Mr. Morris Lynch of the United States of America for services to education. Mrs. Alice Lynch and Mr. Morris Lynch established the Rebecca L. Lynch Memorial Scholarship in memory of their daughter to provide New Zealand women an opportunity to study in America. Over 40 New Zealand women have been assisted by the scholarship, which allows students to study at the University of Idaho for two semesters. The scholarship has gone to diverse fields covering non-resident tuition fees, registration fees and room and board costs. Mr. and Mrs. Lynch visit the scholarship students and host them at their home. Mr. and Mrs. Lynch have not lived in New Zealand since the 1960s, but remain committed to assisting New Zealand women to study in the United States. Mr. and Mrs. Lynch's insignia will be received on their behalf by Lisa Lynch. Your Excellency, to receive the Queen's Service Medal, Mr. Carnell Baden of Auckland for services to the Indian community. Mr. Carnell Baden has contributed to the Indian community in Auckland since the early 1990s. Mr. Baden is a founder and president of the Ambedkar Sport and Cultural. He's currently national coordinator for Global Organization of People of Indian Origin, GOPIO New Zealand, and is a member of GOPIO International. He was secretary of the Pukikohe Indian Association and president of Gopio Pukikohe. Mr. Baden was instrumental in the development of the Guru Ravida Saba Temple and also served as chairman, vice president and secretary. Mr. Andy Barber of Nelson for services to karate and the community. Mr. Andy Barber founded and has run the Nelson Karate Dojo since 1974. An eighth Dan Black Belt, he's been instrumental in establishing karate programs, catering for the personal development and well-being of its students, including blind and deaf students. He's worked closely with local organizations, running programs for disadvantaged people, and opened Uchi Deshi House, offering unemployed young people life skills and a safe living space. The Sado Benefit Fund was established to provide assistance to Nelson families in need, and since 1989 has distributed more than $100,000. Mr. Blair Furlong of Napier for services to cricket and rugby. Mr. Blair Furlong was the Central District's Cricket Association's Chief Executive Officer from 1988 to 2010, during which time he brought together the disparate parts of the Central District's area to ensure they were a strong contributor to the national cricket scene. He played a key role in the redevelopment of Yarrow Stadium in New Plymouth and has been a strong supporter of the development of McLean Park in Napier to be able to host international rugby and cricket. He was assistant coach of the Hawke's Bay Magpies and has been Hawke's Bay Rugby Union president since 2011.
Mr. Roy Lithgow of Stratford for services to philanthropy, rugby and the community. Mr. Roy Lithgow formed the Lithgow Family Foundation Trust in 2011 to provide tertiary education scholarships to secondary school students. He's been involved with rugby in Taranaki since 1951, serving 10 years on the National Executive of the New Zealand Referees Association and as President of the Taranaki Rugby Football Union. He's currently in his third term as President of the Stratford Rotary Club. He was a Director of the Taranaki Farmers Co-op and Secretary of the Stratford Demonstration Farm Society. He's also been involved with the Mariri Rest Home Committee and the Stratford District Theatre Trust. Mrs. Linda MacDonald of Christchurch for services to the community. Mrs. Linda MacDonald has contributed to the social welfare of her community in many areas. Mrs. MacDonald worked as a strengthening families facilitator and served on a number of social welfare panels. She was a coordinator of Heartland Services, a prototype service developed to promote access to government and NGO services. Heartland Services was nominated for a United Nations Award. She's been involved in governance and management roles in her church since becoming a member of St Paul's Parish Council. She tutored students, organised retreats and was a coordinator for the family group movement. Mr. Ian Patterson of Wellington for services to philanthropy. Mr. Ian Patterson and his late wife Sally established the Just Patterson Real Estate Company. An award-winning auctioneer, Mr. Patterson has helped raise on average $200,000 annually for various charities in New Zealand and overseas. He's been involved with the Maligan Institute since his wife's sudden death from a brain tumour in 2009. He and his daughters have donated a percentage of their Just Patterson sales commissions in support of brain cancer research. He has personally funded a Goal Setter Award of $2,500 annually for the past six years for outstanding tertiary students who have overcome difficulties. Reverend Raunika Stainton of Hicks Bay for services to Māori. The Reverend Raunika Stainton has been involved in the Kohanga Reo movement and has been committed to preserving and teaching Māori language and culture to younger generations. The Reverend Stainton teaches and supports Te Reo Māori at Te Kura Kaupapa Māori or Kawakawa Mai Tafiti, having completed her Masters in Mā Tauranga Māori at the age of 82. She's a trustee of Hine Maurea Marae. Her involvement with the Anglican Church over 50 years has seen her provide spiritual and cultural support for her community. She's also taught Te Reo and Tikanga Māori in Auckland and at Gisborne, ministered to the Māori community of Tairawhiti.
Mr. Bruce Tuanui of Chatham Islands for services to conservation. Mr. Bruce Tuanui has made a significant contribution to conservation on the Chatham Islands. He was the driver behind the early fencing work and covenanting of lands to provide habitat for critically endangered Chatham Island species. He has helped drive the Tycho Trust to support a conservation management program for the critically endangered Tycho, magenta petrel. He conceived, set aside land, and helped construct two predator-proof fences for both Tycho and the Chatham Islands albatross. Mr. Tuanui has been a member of the Numbers Committees and advisory groups and helps advise the Department of Conservation when called upon. Excellency, the investiture is concluded. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, an investiture ceremony is the most important event I hold on behalf of Her Majesty, the Queen of New Zealand. It's important because it allows me as Governor-General to recognise and thank an extraordinary group of people on behalf of all New Zealanders. It's important that we acknowledge and celebrate the people who make a contribution, who set an example to others by using their talents to make ours a better society. An award of this nature is a rare accolade. It recognises determination, commitment, perseverance, compassion and a contribution to our society. To the recipients, we've all been privileged to hear your stories. You have set a fine example which inspires, encourages and motivates others. In your own way, each of you promotes the things that are important to New Zealanders. Your actions and the stories we've heard today bring to mind the words of the scientist and innovator Sir Paul Callaghan when he said, What greater sense of fulfilment can there be but to make a difference to the community in which you live? Your contribution has enriched the cultural, social and economic fabric of Aotearoa New Zealand. On behalf of the Queen of New Zealand and all New Zealanders, I congratulate you on your achievements, your character and your commitment. Kia ora hui hui tato katoa. Ladies and gentlemen, that almost concludes the formal part of the ceremony today. But before uh, I ask you to come through and join us for refreshments in the house, may I ask you to stand and sing the national anthem in Māori and in English.